We are back with the Florida forecast, and of course, it is hot, it's summer, it's August in Florida, but some of that bigger time heat coming back, especially for the northern part of the state, we're going to break that down. We're also going to break down the zones, North Florida, Central Florida, South Florida. Most of the state does stay dry, but we'll show you where those rain chances start to increase. Tropics also been the buzz lately, especially over the weekend and early on Monday and early Tuesday. We had four storms named in like 39 hours, breaking a record there. We're going to talk about what that means for florida in the short term and long term so stick around for the tropical update towards the end of the video for the tropics update before we get into that if you want to stay updated on all things florida weather hit that subscribe button if you do find this content helpful in any way would appreciate a thumbs up it really does help us out a lot all right let's get to it plans tuesday evening august 22nd most of us are going to be dry, just a stray passing downpour. The air is just so dry. I will show you why that is the case in just one second. And then we're going to get into the entire Florida view here. There's 9 o'clock on your Tuesday looking good. A few extra clouds passing by on Wednesday morning. And then same kind of deal. We are going to see a slightly higher chance for a few thunderstorms. That is all relative. You saw it flare up there. Just a few of us are going to be lucky enough to help out the lawn. Of course, we desperately still need the rain on the Gulf Coast of Florida. We could use the rain in a lot of spots. I know mine is, my lawn is crunchy. Post in the comments if your lawn is crunchy as well. It is brown. If you forget to water, it's pretty much fried. High temperatures tomorrow through central Florida back into the middle 90s. Again, the good thing is this time around as we are cranking up the heat just a little bit more, we don't have a ton of that humidity. It's, of course, humid outside. I know that. But it's not like that crazy stuff from two weeks ago where we had the heat index up to like 110, 15, pushing 120 in spots. So that isn't coming back. It's more of a dry heat. I guess you could say we've taken some of that humidity out of the atmosphere. And you can see that here by the water vapor imagery. You can actually thank Tropical Storm Herald for that. It's part of the reason anyway. But you see here on the water vapor imagery, anywhere it's brown and orange, that is where the drier air is, and it's kind of surging in. There's a little upper low right here. You see that little curl? This is what's going to help to increase rain chances for us in South Florida. So that's going to be one of the lone spots where we're doing a little bit of dodging on Wednesday for the thunderstorms. This little flare up here of all the different colors uh, south of Houston around San Antonio and especially towards Brownsville, Corpus Christi. That is where we have uh, Tropical Storm Harold made landfall earlier on the 22nd. It's kind of pooling that dry air across Florida and giving our friends in Texas uh, a lot of rain in the southern part. The other big national story here and some of that driving feature, if you will, of why we're going to be hot across parts of Florida and on the drier side is this record-breaking ridge of high pressure. It's crushing records, especially in the central part of the country. Big-time humidity out there as well. Heat indices are like 120, maybe greater than 125 in spots. It's nuts out there. It is nuts. Part of that related to the corn, evapotranspiration. Uh, when it gets really hot out, the corn sweats, and then it, that extra moisture into the low levels of the atmosphere really helps to ratchet up the heat index. So that's something that really, really happens out in the Midwest. Anyway, that was kind of like that tangent that sometimes go on. We are seeing some of that drier air kind of spill, and you notice the clockwise flow around that high pressure. You saw that drier air on the water vapor imagery. That will continue. We are under the influence of that across part of the state of Florida. You see that little orange color here, the darker the orange and red color, the bigger hole that area of high pressure is going to have on our weather, uh, weather forecast. But a lot of the panhandle also going to be dealing with some bigger heat. Not the craziest humidity, but it is going to be hotter. Stick around for a second, and we'll go through the zone-by-zone zone forecast for you. I want to show you the future radar first for the state of Florida. Here you go at 4 o'clock on Tuesday uh, through 5 o'clock into the early evening. A few scattered storms around the Jacksonville area, also around Key West. There are a few storms coming out of the Bahamas, courtesy of that upper low that I showed you on the water vapor imagery. There is more scattered storms tomorrow, 6 o'clock, driving into work around Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach. You might see a few of those scattered storms continue. And then also closer up towards the Orlando area, closer to the Space Coast, and then back to around Jacksonville. Just a few scattered storms, certainly not a washout by any means, just doing a little dodging. Pensacola, Port St. Joe, and Tallahassee, we are mainly dry again, and that drier day 
really allows us to crank up the thermostat. Look at this. Surging beyond the triple digits across parts of the panhandle. 102 in Bonifay on Wednesday. Tallahassee hitting the century mark. Rain chance is painfully low again. They'll increase a little bit to about 20% from Lake City into Jacksonville. And then back into St. Augustine. That's about all I have, though. Just, again, a little bit of dodging for us. Back through central Florida. Ocala, we have a 20% shot for a few storms. Same for us in Orlando, us in Vero Beach. Lakeland, we'll see a 10% shot. And again, 20% chance in Tampa through the St. Pete, St. Pete Beach area as well. Rain chance is super low. Not zero on Wednesday, but on the lower side as we continue to move forward. Now back to South Florida. I showed you the future radar just a little bit ago. Here's where our higher rain chances come courtesy of that little swirl, that upper low moving out of the Bahamas. 40% chance for a few storms in Fort Lauderdale. Again, it's not going to be a washout, just a higher opportunity to get wet tomorrow in South Florida. 30% shot in Miami. Those chances start to really decrease as those storms move across from east to west. Fort Myers, our rain chance is pretty much a goose egg. And then into Naples, only a 20% chance. Same for us in the Keys. So we're doing okay if you're planning on doing anything outside over the next couple of days, really. We are going to be on the drier side. All right, so here is the active Atlantic, and it's kind of all around us right now. We have a nice little force field, thankfully. So none of these are coming to Florida, but I want to talk about a few things long range uh, in a little bit. If you've seen some of the computer models on social media, I'll touch on that. Promise. Here we go. This is the remnants of Emily. So we had that huge flurry of storms named over the weekend. They were worthy of being named. They, criteria-wise anyway, hit all of the naming features you need 39 mile per hour winds or greater greater than 39 mile per hour winds to get a name that's tropical storm status you need to have that closed center gert was kind of there maybe it hit tropical storm status for a brief time but i mean it is long gone emily lasted like that and then also succumbed to wind shear and dry air that's gone but its remnants are highlighted again by the hurricane center for a chance for development there 30 percent that wave from yesterday that rolled off right there uh lower chances only now a 50 percent chance to develop it had a 70% shot yesterday. A depression is still possible as we get into next week. It's something we're going to watch, but this is not going to be a player for us. Franklin, of course, is going to be the high-impact storm here that will likely stay a tropical storm as it heads towards Hispaniola. It's the heavy rain there. It's really not going to get strong until it gets right about here. Then it could become a hurricane. We'll see if that happens or not. It does not look too healthy right now. And, of course, there is Harold that ramped up right before landfall. That was to be expected. Thankfully, there was not water ahead of this thing for a long period of time it ran into texas it's giving them some beneficial rain none of these are coming to florida now i do think over the next couple of weeks we are going to start to see uh or continue to see a flurry of storms trying to pop up the question is can the atlantic support them and so far at this point more often than not, the answer is no we have some drier air out there the wind shear has been out there again emily shot up gone gert kind of shot up gone and franklin is really struggling harold was really the only one that had a little oomph and again land stopped that one so the only spot that i would be really concerned about is kind of like right in here where the wind shear backed off this week i want to take this out into the future because i know there's i know the models are out there i, I look at them every day it's it's literally my job so I, I've seen them, and I know a lot of you guys that kind of tune in have seen them as well, that have shown some ominous model runs, various models. The Euro's doing it, the GFS, I mean, the Euro's doing it right now. It's what I have on the screen here towards August 30th, and it's showing this thing here. I just want to say that, number one, the Euro is strengthening this thing over land, which is not a thing. So the Euro's kind of out to lunch on that. But to not trust what you see on social media i know that there's been some big bad hurricane runs that have been plastered everywhere if something were to develop right down in here we would have no way of knowing where it's gone where it's going to go until it gets formed because we call this it's it's kind of a quasi central american gyre it, it develops in june and then it kind of comes back a little bit towards uh, the end of hurricane season it's a semi-permanent area of low pressure that chills right over central america now Every now and then, it spits out a disturbance, and it goes up, or it comes back into the eastern Pacific. So we're going to see, number one, which basin gets it. We don't know that for sure. 
Um, and for two, we have, we have no idea where it goes. So if you see something that shows like this crazy big landfall in Florida from a really strong storm, I, don't freak out. Don't freak out. It's certainly in the realm of possibilities. I mean, we're heading towards Labor Day weekend in a couple of weeks. We're getting close to the climatological peak. Um, and I, I want to actually show you something while, while I have it up because you can't post models without any kind of context. And I will say there is some argument for something happening because of all that little green blobbiness you see on the screen here. This is some rising motion through the Atlantic Basin. So this is at least thunderstorm producing wise in the Atlantic has been the most favorable for Atlantic thunderstorm development. Now, the basin has not been able to sustain that, which has been awesome. But for the next couple of weeks, we might be watching here. And again, it's the peak of hurricane season, but we're getting help from something known as the Madden-Julian Oscillation right now, a convectively uh, enhanced area that goes across the globe every 30 to 60 days. When it comes into our part of the world, it helps to force air up, creating more thunderstorms. So really, and I'll show you here, I'll take this out. This is through the 29th of August, that through September 5th, and then you see the brown coming back. That is unfavorable condition. So as we get into maybe the September 10th, through the 17th area, we might be able to shut off things. And then wind shear should continue to build from the El Nino that continues to get stronger. So we're watching, but there's nothing to freak out about anywhere along the Gulf Coast that a random model run has chosen a hurricane for you today. Okay. We're going to be watching it closely. We're going to have updates, of course, uh, if anything threatens Florida. And at, for the time being, there are no immediate threats to Florida. Uh, best news that I can give you as we are in a nice dry pattern and things are happening all around us. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay updated on all things Florida weather, especially, again, as we are going through the peak of hurricane season, we remove the noise and all that garbage that's out there on social media. You've come to the right place. Please. Hit that thumbs up button. Please hit that subscribe button and we will catch you next time.